Good morning. Good morning. This is my take three. I'm trying to make sure that I have a reception for this. And as soon as I just get a confirmation, then I'm going to start driving. That I do indeed have a reception for this. While I wait just a moment before I just go on ahead and start talking anyway, um, I just want to just honor God for this day, for his blessings, for his goodness, for his mercy, for his compassion, his loving kindness, his provision. I thank him for his protection. I thank him for his patience. Have mercy. God, I thank you for your patience. I thank you for not giving up on your people. I thank you I thank you, Lord God, for your fire extinguisher. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, okay. I have some confirmation that this is, um, that this is working. Thank you, husband. I appreciate you because I wasn't sure what was going on with this thing. But, um, I take it that uh, you can hear me well, and um, that is a blessing. So, thank you. Um, definitely don't have an intention to be on long. This was something that started stirring in me last night, and you know, I, I wish I had been. Um, is that my brother? Oh my gosh. Hey, um, but you know, I wish I had more time to kind of really prepare for this. And y'all, it, it's, I, I don't even really have a way to package just what's on my mind and on my heart. So, you know, I'm just going to just, just talk. And um, if you guys say something and I'm able to catch it when I'm safely stopped, then I definitely will do so. But, you know, my, my title for this, um, this Conqueror's Road, you know, discussion this morning, or these thoughts that I'm sharing is what's really good, you know, and for all my, my up top people, y'all know what that means, you know, now for anybody else, I could probably say, now tell me what's what's going on like what are your thoughts and how are you feeling is there are there any internal um issues going on do you have any you know deep rooted concerns you know for everybody else you know that that's what i'm saying but for my up top people when we say what's really good that's what that means and and that's the place that i'm coming from this morning because as I am addressing those in the body of Christ and you know and as always I do pray that there are people who are not of the fold yet that are watching because I'm not in the business of you know just trying to you know swap members because Elsam doesn't even do members and that's another conversation for another day but the only membership I'm concerned about is are you a member of the body of Christ now, once you are a member of the body of Christ, we can talk about church affiliation because, you know, I absolutely do believe in using signals and breaking on time, people. Anyway, but um, help me, Lord. But anyway, um, I do believe in the local church house. Now, you do need to be able to be a place where you can learn 
about the word, a place where everybody knows your name, where you can be discipled, you can be touched, because there's, there's one thing to give a word to somebody through a screen, and we thank God for the great ways we can use social media. However, you do need to be able to be in a fellowship of your brothers and sisters in Christ and people who are more advanced spiritually than you are that can touch you because there's some things that God's going to reveal when you are actually in that proximity of another person. So as much as I love those of you who support Elsam and, and watch us online, that should never take the place of fellowshipping with other believers and regularly. And that's Bible too. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Brethren, how, how much of a blessing it is when brethren for them to dwell together in unity. So, you know, we got scripture to, to back that up as well. Nevertheless, nevertheless, um, as I kind of go back to what my topic is here today about what's really good is I get really frustrated when it comes to the end of the year, when it comes to my brothers and sisters in Christ, as everybody is ramping up for the new year and, you know, all of a sudden now here come December and everybody trying to clean house and trying to get rid of folk, you know, trying to get rid of all your haters. And when I tell you I'm so sick of messages about haters, now I'm not saying that it's not um, important at times to educate people on what haters are, what their position is, but when all you want to do is just, you know, give a message where you just gossiping about being hurt and you know what, well, you know, you, you just got to you know, rise above these people and all of that. that. That shows me how immature you are and how much you don't read the word. Jesus clearly tells us that the world's going, the world is going to hate us. So wh why, why do you think that a message about haters, haters is revelatory? No, you got some unforgiveness in you and that's why you preaching it that way. If you even want to call it preaching, but anyway, I digress. So nevertheless, my point is, my point is that as the year comes to the, to a close, everybody you know, is you know, we start turning on people. It's like a negative air. It's never really a, for the most part. And I and, and and please understand the things that I'm saying. I understand that that sometimes they are situation specific, okay. But there still is a very overwhelming spirit that we have and and that we perpetuate and that we pass along like we coughing on each other like like a virus you know where even if it appears that we're being positive about the year that's coming up it's always with the air of you know leaving this behind you know and you know because this year was this and, and and the people was that and you know I'm, I'm going on to my greater and and all of that and and see and my thing is this if that's the case then every year when you start proclaiming that the next year is your year why is it at the end of the year you about cursing the year and claiming that the coming year is your year what year is really your year because I'm going to tell you, this year here, this year right here, right here, right here, right here, this year right here, this has been a great year. I cannot say that, oh, you know what, I can't wait till 2019 is over because, you know, because 2020 going to be my year. And 20, you know, 2020 this and 2020 that and 2020. No, this has been a great year. Even the things that were extremely challenging and rough for me, they were for my making. They built me up. This has been an amazing year. I dare not say and jump on the, 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 the pitiful bandwagon that 2019 was a hot mess. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. And I'm not taking anything away from anybody who struggled this year. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, we have to do an internal check about what's going on with us. 
We do. We have to do an internal check and we also have to check our expectations. And then we also have to check to see whether or not our actions match our expectations. You know, everybody wants to have a great year and they want everything to go their way and, and, and for everything just to be yay and amen for them. But how have you postured yourself? What have you done? How much, my God, how much have you yielded and submitted yourself to the crushing that is required for the oil to pour. Everybody want the oil, but nobody want to be a part of the crushing. That's why when people say, you know, uh, salvation is free, but the anointing will cost you something, it does. Even if you didn't ask to be anointed, even if you didn't ask to be anointed, if you are walking in obedience to what God has put on your life, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost, it's, it's going to come with pain and it's going to come with sacrifice. But with the obedience comes rewards. See, that, that's the thing that people don't understand. And, and it may not come the way that you're expecting it to come. That's, see, this is why I say you got to check your expectations and then your actions. Because you may be wanting, you know, something great, but you're not willing to put forth the, the mentality to do it until. Now, the other thing that I kind of want to touch on as we are preparing for this year is the condition of your heart. I don't know if my brother Troy is still on here. There, uh, he preached a message when my husband and I visited him and his wife in their church in South Carolina. And it was called Matters of the Heart. And when I tell you this, this message was powerful enough for a baby in Christ to digest it and for the mature in Christ to be convicted, ha, my God, and redirected. Because all of this is a matter of our heart. It's a heart issue. And so one of the things that some of you who, who may know me know that I have been called to is the ministry of reconciliation and forgiveness. And God convicted me because he said, okay, you, you understand that this is something that I've called you to, but you're not even addressing it as often as you need to be publicly now privately I do Pri I mean privately I do and I don't mean just in my own life I mean in in people that I talk to it, it's always something that I'm talking about or if I'm hearing somebody who seems like they're having a, a forgiveness deficit I'm always talking to that but publicly for the 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 platform <clears throat> that God has given and will give me, I need to talk about that more. And so that's kind of what I want to touch on right now is where are you when it comes to forgiveness? Don't go to the altar on New Year's Eve. Talk about, you know what, you know, I'm just going to forgive everybody, whoever did anything to me. And, you know, if I did anything to you, do you know what I'm saying? Then, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know, you know what I'm saying? Then forgive me. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm going forward because, you know, I'm moving on to my grade or whatever. No, that that was, I'm no, sorry, not sorry. That was not um, repentance or forgiveness. And please understand that the two, the, those are two different things. Repentance and forgiveness um, uh, is, is two different things. Whether you're the one asking for forgiveness or you're the one receiving it. Uh, but that, that's another conversation for another day. Soon. As I've been chastised by the Lord. So soon. That's a conversation for another day soon. But where are you as it applies to your ability to forgive people? See, one of the, the misconceptions about forgiveness is people believe that to forgive means that it's okay. Forgiveness does not mean that what that person did is okay. And yes, I do believe that, you know, forgiveness is about you. It's not about the other person. But 
I, I want to take the worldly twinge out of that because even even though that's a true statement what I tend to pick up when the world says that you know like forgiveness is you know it's about you it ain't about them it's about you know well you just gotta be free you know so you know so you know you don't let them have no power over you it's always kind of an air to it it's almost like an air of arrogance to it in in selfishness self-centeredness to it and again I'm not saying that all of that is not true However, what I want to appeal to you is to look at forgiveness as an ex and a reflection, an extension, an act of your appreciation for what God has done for you. See, when we hold on to unforgiveness, it's kind of like, you know, when we say that statement, oh, how quickly we forget. And that's what that is. How quickly we forget how much of a wretch we were. How dirty and trifling we were. Now, you know, when, when we at the altar or, or when we're at home, and I'm praying that it's not just at the altar that you crying out to God and praying. I pray that it ain't just at the altar that you praying. I pray that that's not the only time you talking to God. All right. Okay, I had to say that. Cuz one thing I can tell you, I I can erupt in tongues at any moment. My kids don't they don't flinch at all. Why? Because it's normal for them. They don't just see me in a service speaking in tongues and worshiping God. So if I do it at home, they're like, "Oh my goodness, mommy, what, what what's the matter? Are you okay?" No. They don't they don't say a thing to me. <laughs> because it's normal. But anyway, When are you, and I feel a little change here, when are you going to learn that some things you got to just let go? When are you going to understand that? When are you, when are you going to look at what God has done for you, how he saved you, how he cleaned you up? When you were snotting and crying and reflecting on how dirty you were and the fact that God still loves you. With all the horrible things that you did by accident, but most of them on purpose. But here it is that somebody else has done something horrible and seemingly unforgivable. Seemingly unforgivable. By the world standards, unforgivable. And now we have a criteria. We, we, we have a, a, a rubric of forgiveness. Listen, y'all. I am not saying that the stuff that some people do does not merit them getting a straight up and down beat down. Because see, listen, Lord have mercy. Now y'all, this is me talking here. I know y'all like, well, who else we, we been listening to? No, but for me, listen, there's some people they might need to get a beat down before they change. I'm just telling you what I've seen. I I, I told y'all what happened to me in college where I had a roommate that was, Lord have mercy. She she was really sent. She was really sent um um to, to agitate me and to attempt to torment me. And I was like, I am not going to be bullied by the enemy. And I was staying, all kinds of crap was going on. And um, she talked about, um, when I actually finally moved, because because the person who I um, ended up being my next roommate, well, she just was like, Come, "Well, you know, Jesus suffered, so you don't have to." And I was like, "I know, but I ain't let the devil push me out." You know, I was gonna stay there for that test. I was I was gonna stay there. And when the test was over, I moved out, and and she ended up calling my my um my new roommate a slur to her face. And all I know is that my roommate jumped on her. It was braids everywhere. And next thing you know, they cool, but she still don't talk to me. And, I, and I'm like, so, so you mean to tell me had I just beat you down a long time ago or in your sleep? Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance. We could have been cool because all I wanted was peace. Y'all, but listen, do not go out there and start beating people. 
Because we don't have enough money for the GoFundMe for your bail money. So don't do that now. But what I'm saying is, I understand that the things that some people do are horrid. Because I can start touching on some issues. Like you can be like, you can start checking off the list like, oh, I can forgive that. Somebody step on your toe. I can forgive that. Somebody, uh, you know, break something valuable to you. All right, I'd be a little upset, but you know, I can forgive that. Okay, somebody steal money from you. Hmm. Now, see, I don't play by my money, but you know what? The Lord give it, and the Lord take it away. Oh, you know what? I can forgive that. All right. Somebody come and um, somebody hit your child. That's when the head start rolling. Okay, somebody um. Sexually assaults your child. Yeah, here you go. From, from the time I said somebody hit your child, you, you're supposed to check off the list. You, that's supposed to be able to be forgiven, right? The next thing you know, that finger starts switching to another finger. I'm just saying. Somebody, somebody takes the life of somebody close to you on purpose. Can you forgive that? Look, it's funny y'all, some of the numbers started dropping. <laughs> I'm not laughing at what I'm saying. I'm laughing because... It, it just it just is such a, a visual example of people like, well, I can't go with you on that one. But if you're the person who has committed that act and now you want to change and give your life to Christ. Don't you want Christ to forgive you for what you've done? See, nobody understands the vital and dire need for, give, for forgiveness like the person who's in need of forgiveness. I'm going to say it again. Nobody understands the vital and dire need of forgiveness like the person who's in need of forgiveness it's very easy to condemn people it's very easy to throw people away but when you become removed from what it felt like to need to be forgiven it can make you a very very cold person when you have, in some ways, the power to forgive. So, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a jump start to start thinking and start really working on your spirit and your memory. about the things that you've done, the things that you've needed to be forgiven for. And start forgiving people now. Let me tell y'all something. I've had, mm, okay, woo. I said I've had, and I almost went into a full-blown out, bawling, crying fit. I've had, I've had some people close to me who have really lost some people and I just it's like every time I turn around on my timeline it's another rest in peace some of these people may have known that the person was sick 
And, you know, in those cases, the only blessing in that is that it didn't catch you off guard. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make the sting of losing somebody any less, but at least it's like, but y'all understand what I'm saying? Cause I'm not trying to diminish it. So just please understand. I'm, I'm not trying to diminish it, but it's like, it almost gives you a little bit of time to kind of prepare, even if that's not what you want. For that person, because there are some people that, you know, they're in pain and, and they're hurting and you just want them to be at rest. And so and, and even that is a, and, and, even, and even in those cases, you've already been kind of preparing yourself, you know. But when these things happen and they're unexpected. So many people find themselves. Envying people who were able to watch their loved ones slip away because you had time to say something or to if you needed to forgive them or if you if you know you needed to ask for forgiveness you were able to do that in that time but what about if that person was snatched up out of here and you never got to say that you were sorry and ask them to please forgive you. Or you knew that you were holding on to unforgiveness and you were torturing them with not forgiving them. And a lot of times children can do that with parents. Parents who may have abandoned them and maybe now they've come back around or parents who were on drugs, you know, and they felt like their parents weren't there for them. And but now they're back in their lives and, you know, uh, or, or they forsaken them in some other kind of way. But the parent has tried to make amends and that child is still holding on to that. A lot of times. They can really hold that over that parent. So what if that parent. It's taken away. And you never got to say to them, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for making you suffer all that time. I was still hurt and I just didn't deal with my pain. I'm sorry for making you suffer like that. Or a parent who was so disappointed in their child for the life choices that they made and and uh, or they may have went to jail for for this or, or or they may have been strung out on drugs or or maybe they didn't go down the career path that you may have wanted or you know they they may have stole things from you or crashed your car or i mean whatever a child could do and you treated them bitterly you're extremely bitter with them for so long and something happens, an illness undiagnosed, all of a sudden, boom, they out of here. Car accident, freak accident somewhere. They go into a sporting event, somebody starts shooting and they in the crossfire. They trying to turn their life around. Somebody jealous. And so they kill. I mean. What then? That type of grief. And that pain. And so now. You've. Tra now you've traded. The unforgiveness. Years and years of unforgiveness. For years and years of guilt. And who's benefiting? I know. The enemy. Because he had you in the bondage of unforgiveness and now he got you in the bondage of, of no self-forgiveness. So, I'm going to be talking about this a couple more times before the year's over. But don't wait. Don't wait until the year is over. Don't wait until the year, until we at New Year's and, and they singing this little light of mine and, and all that. And they're doing the countdown for you to start trying to cleanse your heart. We don't know what lies ahead for anybody. But why put off 
till later. I'm not even going to say tomorrow. Why put that off when you can do it today? Why is it important? It's important because it's for, yes, it's for your own health, the own health of your spirit. But it's also to show that if God forgave you and you're so grateful, somebody else, anybody else, everybody else is worthy of your forgiveness as well. It doesn't mean that what they did was okay. See, forgiveness and behavior and or, or redesigning or restructuring in a relationship, two totally different things. Two totally different things. You can forgive a person and then work on that relationship to be restored better than it was before. But then you can also forgive someone and have an understanding that our connection can't be the way it used to be. But even though it can't be the way it used to be, I need you to understand that I love you and I'm not going to hold any bitterness in my heart towards you. No, we're not going to be calling each other. No, we're not going to hang out because th there's just some dynamics of who we are that don't mesh together. But I need you to understand that I do love you. That's what I'm saying. It's two different things. But you need to be clear about that. And understand that you'll be tested. You'll be tested. You'll be tested. On whether or not you really forgive somebody. And if you really want to be more like Jesus. You will submit to the testing. You will submit to the cleansing. You will submit to the fire. No matter how dumb the devil tells you that you are. Because the devil going to tell you that you're stupid. I know you ain't going to forgive them after they did this to you. After they did that to you. Ugh. You're going to be tested. But accept it. Submit to the testing. Because like my brother Troy said, Pastor Troy Cato, it's a matter of your heart. Where is your heart really? Are you for God? Do you want to be like Christ? Do you want to enter in? Then that's going to dictate your actions. So I just want to say for anybody who is watching right now, who wants to be free of that weight of unforgiveness, not the way the world tells you, not for those purposes, not just so you could just be done with that. So you could just get that off of you. No, but because you don't want Christ, you don't want God to find anything in you that is not like him because you really want to be more like him. Because if God could send his son to the world to die for us, and they still, even while he was here, was spitting in his face, Mocking him, plotting to kill him, coming for him, clapping back, trying to say this, try, trying to do certain things to catch him in a lie, plotting, plotting, plotting. But yet he was still obedient, even though he didn't want to go. Obedient to the cross to die for us. And even now he's at the right hand of the father making intercession for us. Because he understands he is our high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. All of that. He's interceding for us when we turn our backs on him still. If you want to be like him. Then just posture your heart right now. Posture your heart to be in a place of stillness. To silence the voice of the enemy. Trying to tell you that you're ridiculous. Trying to show you how right you were. Trying to bring back different pieces of the pain that you felt. Be still in your spirit. Don't sit and wait for stillness to happen. Purpose in your mind and your heart that you will be still. And in that stillness that you will focus on your heavenly father. 
Thank him for his grace, for his mercy, for his unwavering patience towards you, for not destroying him. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. Thank him for keeping you when you refused to be kept, when you ran from him, when you were rebellious, when you were disobedient. Thank him for yet and still being available and reachable and attainable. Thank him for forgiving you of every dirty, nasty, filthy, disgusting, accidental, and purposeful planned out on your calendar thing that you've ever done to transgress against his law. Every way that you've ever behaved that was contrary to the righteousness and holiness that you were supposed to be walking out. Thank him for forgiving you for that. Even if you have to start with one person at a time, get that person in your mind and understand that we all have the same enemy. There's one enemy. And different people for different reasons allow that enemy to operate through them. Love the person. Love them. In your heart, confess that you love them. Admit truthfully that you don't like what they did. That what they did hurt. That what they did offended you. But that holding on to the fact of their offense towards you is not worth keeping you out of heaven. And it's not worth putting them in the bondage of unforgiveness because it was through their hands that the offense was committed. You have a two-sided key that unlocks that prison of unforgiveness for you and them. Be reconciled in your heart to forgive people who are not sorry and who will never be sorry. But do not determine that you know that they're never going to change. Because you don't know that. But it's not your job to sit and determine whether or not or to forecast whether or not they're going to change. You need to make the change and release, release them from the debt they owe to you. Release them in the name of Jesus. In your heart and out of your mouth, say, I release. Say their name if you need to. I release. Say their name or their names. I release them from the debt they owe to me. I release whatever their name is from the guilt of the offense. And I forgive them in the name of Jesus. Now ask God to help deliver you from the memory. Ask God to deliver you from the flashbacks that the enemy will use to keep you in bondage, to keep you constantly reliving it. Say, God, release me from the flashback. Release me from the receipts. Release me from the pain of the details. And free me to walk in complete forgiveness. 
Now, God, show me the wisdom of how to move forward with or without this person. So I can do it in love. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, it is so. And so be it unto you. I want all of us to be free. I don't want any one of us to be holding on to something that's going to cause us to continue to just to die and to be eaten away at. So as I said, I'll be back a couple of times before the year's over. I love you guys. I love you guys. In Jesus' name, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Why are we more than conquerors? Because we're going to persevere. If we fall, we're going to get back up. Victory is ours. Eternal victory is ours. Amen. Amen. You guys be blessed. I love you all.